Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and if you've been watching my videos, you see that I have a live switcher in my basement studio here, and uh, for a very long time, at least a year and a half, I've been using the uh, ATEM television studio from Blackmagic, and it is a low-cost, you know, about a $1,000 uh, high-definition video switcher that really does a pretty nice job. It's very basic transportation, but uh, it does a great job of switching video back and forth and really speeding up my workflow. And uh, the other day I was on Amazon and I saw one of these going used for a really good price. And hoping, hoping it's going to work because I haven't hooked it up yet. Uh, but this is the uh, live production switcher. Uh, this is the 1ME, which is $1,500 more new than the television studio is. But I got it for uh, significantly less than that. Just happened to be browsing at the right time, I suppose. So let's just take a look at the back panel here so you can see uh, what this has, maybe how it differs from the television studio. It has four HD. HDMI inputs, and that's actually the same number of inputs that the TV studio version does. However, it also has two additional SDI connections over the TV studio, so you have a total of eight. Um, so you really get the same HDMI connections, but uh, if you wanted to, you could really have up to eight things plugged in. Um, the main reason I got this actually was for uh, the DVE effects that this thing brings to the table. So when I'm doing a live interview, I can actually uh, put up a box of somebody behind me here without having to drag a monitor in. And uh, you know, I thought it was starting to look a little, little uh, less, less professional than I would like. So uh, this, that was the main impetus, but uh, this does have some more inputs if I want to take advantage of those. On the other side of the huge heat sink you have on this thing, uh, are additional SDI uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, you also have um, a uh, USB 3.0 connector, so you can run uncompressed video out of this thing via USB 3.0 uh, to your computer for recording. I use a recorder off the HDMI, so it's pretty much the same kind of thing, but uh, if you don't have a recorder, you can get uh, uncompressed out of this thing. Uh, you have a spot for your multi-view and HDMI, which is the monitor that I use on my desk to just to see all my sources. And you also have program out, and this is what I run into my recorder and into my live streaming box as well. So you, it's pretty much the same there. Um, additionally, though, is that it doesn't require uh, any kind of analog to digital to, uh, converter for audio. And you do that uh, through this little mess of cables that they include with it as well. So uh, these are all XLR uh, connections, so I can run my mixer directly into this. And you'll recall in my video about the television studio product, you have to have an additional converter because it can only take digital audio. This one can take analog audio also. So I'm just hoping that I don't have to deal with the delay issues that I've heard some people are dealing with. So we'll see what happens. I think my cameras are uh, outputting raw uh, over HDMI, so I, I don't think I have an issue, but we'll see when we get everything set up and running here. Uh, and then we've got a Ethernet connection, and this is what you use to control the device. So in many ways, it's pretty similar, except that this thing is a little bit more oomph to it. Uh, so we're going to fire it up. Okay, so we got everything up and running. I, it wasn't uneventful, though. I had some problems with my uh, Canon camera, the one that is actually shooting me right now. Uh, it just won't talk to the switcher directly. I have no idea what's going on. I did a, a firmware update and got everything up to uh, the current version, and just nothing was talking. So what I ended up doing is I have an HDMI splitter that I was using for some other things around the studio. It's powered, and it also detects what the host uh, is looking for as far as resolution is concerned. And I'm running that camera through that splitter, and it's working. So I'm not going to complain too much, but it's kind of a kind of a bummer that I got to put this other piece of equipment in between there. So uh, so that's working. I've had some audio issues too. My, my HyperDeck shuttle uh, wasn't always recording audio when I was running some tests earlier. So I'm hoping a firmware update on that is going to fix it. It's just odd that these things just don't work when we're really just stepping up very slightly from one Blackmagic switching product to another. But we'll hopefully we'll hold off, hold up hope here and hope that everything is going to work from here on out. So uh, so that's that was the uh, the setup. Other than that, it wasn't too hard. Everything is the same. The software is the same. Uh, in fact, most of the, the equipment is the same. It just works the same way as it did before. However, what uh, the production switcher gives you is something that's cool, and that is these little DVE windows. And uh, this is something you can't do on the ATEM television studio uh, because it does require quite a bit of uh, extra hardware inside the device in order to make it work. And uh, what this will let me do is when I'm doing an interview or something, I can put the person up, <laughs> up right there uh, and be able to uh, kind of show two things at once. And you can also do some cool stuff like, uh, like uh, maybe this. There we go. Uh, so you can do live scaling and rotation also of the video as it's playing. So let me show you how that works because it's uh, not always as cut and dry as you might think. Um, so 
Inside this uh, software control, which is what you would normally have with the ATEM television studio, uh, you get a new option within one of your upstream keyers. Now, the other difference between this and the television studio is that you get two more additional upstream keyers. So you can put on uh, this little window running here in the background, but you could also uh, do other things like graphics and whatnot. Now, the, the one that I have, the ME1, only has one of these DVE channels. So I can only have one of these little windows running at a time, but I can have you know, a live video window like this and uh, the little one up there running at the same time. And I've, I can, of course, uh, set different sources for that. So if I go to the first option here, for example, I could uh, fill it with the camera on the desk if I wanted to, uh, or go back to camera one. I could even put in uh, uh, media players and some other stuff that uh, you could do there as well. So pretty, pretty cool uh, that you can do that. Now, there's some really, uh, somewhat granular settings on here. The only problem is, is that I, I wish I had like a joystick to kind of move things around, which um, I don't have, but I guess you could probably buy a control service to do that. Um, you can set some masking. So for example, I could type five in here and cut off my head a little bit if I wanted to. Um, so you can do that. Uh, you can change the position on the screen. So if I set this to 12, it'll move it over like that. Uh, we'll put it back to 10. Uh, so it takes a little bit of setup to kind of get things where you want it to be. And you can uh, save your, your switcher settings and put them in there. So if you find something that you're using in your production all the time, you can kind of set it there and leave it. Now, the one thing that I found is that once you have DVE set up in one of these uh, upstream keying positions, you cannot set it up somewhere else. So it's one shot. You can put it in any one of the four that you have, uh, but you can't have a number of these configured simultaneously. And it's kind of a bummer because I would like to be able to uh, have a couple different scenarios depending on what I'm doing, even though I know I can only use one, but uh, they only let you do one at a time. Uh, there's some other stuff you can do with it though. You can add um, uh, light sources to it. So there's a border around here and you can't really see it too well because my border is kind of small, but you can set uh, kind of a virtual light to, uh, you know, to kind of make the border, give, give it a little bit of a three-dimensional look to it. Uh, you can change the border width here so we can kind of <laughs> go a little nuts here if we wanted to with that. Um, you can even turn the, uh, the border uh, no bevel at all and just have a straight colored border. You can change the color too. So you can uh, go in here and just double click and, you know, maybe make it green or something like that. So you have some options there as well for, you know, some of those little things that you want to do to it. So we'll change it back to, uh, let me change it back to white here. Um, you have some uh, width, you know, different parts of the, uh, the border you can adjust here. You can also soften some edges and uh, so, yeah, so nothing terribly complex, but it's enough to, you know, for doing some basic stuff, you can uh, kind of do some neat things as well with it. So uh, kind of neat. Now this is cool down here. So you have keyframes. And for example, if I go run to B, um, oops, there we go. Uh, I can set basically all those settings I can assign to a keyframe and then change things and then assign it to a second one. So what I did uh, was I had keyframe A at this size and then I set keyframe B to this size and I could do that. Then you could also click this and go full screen with it as well. Uh, and then clicking back on there will return it to its other position. So uh, kind of neat how you can do that. You can also just run the, uh, the thing off completely. Uh, so you have you know, some neat little things you can do with, uh, with that as well. Now there's also some transition controls. So you can set up what's called a stinger and you can uh, do um, basically have like an animation that runs you know, when you, when you want to transfer between two different cameras. You can't do that on the, uh, the television studio. So for example, like in a sports uh, thing, if you want to have one of your graphics kind of roll uh, between a replay and, and live, you can uh, set that up in here as well. Uh, DVE is also available uh, for, um, for those wipes also, although I suspect that you're not going to be able to do them if you're also running, right, see it's not letting me turn it on because I'm running a DVE channel right now. So what you could do is you could um, run these DVE transitions uh, but you can't have a secondary window up at the same time. Now, the other more expensive ATEM television uh, switching products will allow you to have multiple DVE channels, but this one only has one. So, uh, so it's kind of cool. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm a little bit nervous with, uh, let me turn off my other thing here so you don't see too many of me. I am a little bit nervous with some of the, uh, some of the technical issues I ran into initially when getting this on. It's just kind of weird that that camera just doesn't talk to it. I, people have had some issues with this, uh, with this particular version of the ATEM product. So I'm going to go on the message boards a little bit and see if I can figure that part out. But I've got it working for now. I'm just hoping this audio thing is going to stay put and we'll see what happens. But I'd love to answer your questions uh, regarding this because you know, I'm not a real high-end super uh, production kind of guy, so you know, I'm, I'm kind of using it mostly for that picture-in-picture uh, -picture function, but I'd love to uh, answer your questions if you're kind of trying to figure out which one of these products to buy. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.